Hello, welcome everyone. My name is Tim and I want to welcome to you to my CDLQ channel. Basically what we do here is we discuss all things related to CDL or slash trucking. However, we will venture off to talk about a lot of other different topics. Uh, I just want to give you a little bit of background about myself. Uh, I've got my driver license CDL class A all endorsements uh, in, since 96. And ever since then, I probably didn't drive out of, you know, those years between 96 and 23, probably about five years. So I've been in the trucking business pretty much all my life. My father was a trucker. Also, he was a mechanic as well. Actually, that's how I got that drive and that work skill and that work ethic to, uh, to pursue the trucking industry. Um, I was driving trucks when I was 10, 11, 12, 13 years old. Not like driving them on the interstate, nothing, but my dad would fix them and I would take them and drive them around and lot on the yard and stuff like that, scratching gears. So, I, I mean, I just, I love trucking. I love working on trucks. I'm a certified diesel mechanic. I did go to school for diesel mechanic once I graduated from high school. So I also, I've worked on my trucks as well as I own trucks. So. And uh, I got into the uh, trucking industry around right about as um, far as driving for a company. I uh, started out with my brother-in-law. We was driving for Beacons. Uh, back then was known as Beacons. Collins Transport was a moving company. And so I started out doing that with him uh, as a helper. But I got my CDL, you know, I got mine the old way. We just drove, we studied, and we drove, and we just learned on the go. So again, I've been around the trucking industry for a while. And I started out working with uh, uh, with my brother and then I went to Swift. You know, people talk about Swift a lot, but be honest with you, Swift is not a bad company. And be honest with you, I don't believe that there are any bad companies. You know, they just may have some employees who are uh, probably a little difficult to work with, or just may have some bad employees, you know. Uh, people give Swift a lot of uh, flag, but Honestly, I didn't have no problem when I was working with Swift. My trainer, his name was Abraham Aspada. He was actually from the Puerto Rican. And I'm going to tell you, he was the coolest guy I ever had the chance to work with. I mean, he taught me all the ins and outs of the business, the trucking in, in, in uh, trucking business as a lease purchase owner operator. I enjoyed driving. Uh, man, I mean, we had a blast. We had such a great time to where he didn't really want me to get off the truck because I was, I was putting those miles down, man, and he wanted to pay me an extra like 500 bucks, to just 500 bucks to stay on with him back like another week. That's on top of what I was already getting. But I was not turning to get ready to go solo. So, you know, I, it was a great experience and, I, and, and I, I always remember that and I value that. So, you know, for those of you who are looking to get into the trucking industry to get your CDL or you might even be in the trucking industry and you can, you can see the little changes that are going on right now. Of course, you know, the, the market has changed, the rates have dropped, fuel prices going up, truck prices going up, maintenance going up. Everything seems to be going up except how much we earn as truckers. Um, I um, also have had the opportunity and the privilege to have my own authority. I have my own authority. I got my authority it was back in 2011. And I did that for about five years, and I had the opportunity to learn a lot of things, um, build my credit. Uh, again, I worked on my truck. Uh, I acquired about, I had a one, two, three, four trucks that I had owned, uh, about six trailers, and then I had a couple of owner operators. It was, it was a real good experience, man. I had a lot of fun doing that, and I successfully ran it for probably about five or six years. And, um, and then I got out of it, you know, for reasons that, of my own, of course, um, and we can talk about that later as well. So again, I went from as a company driver, working with Swift, and then I went as an independent, and then from that point on, I ended up doing owner-operated lease, which if I only did about three. And I just want to say, man, that I, my, me personally, I've had good experiences. And I'm going to just tell you people something. The experiences that you have in life basically going to be based upon you as an individual. It's going to be based upon your personality, your your attitude, you know, do you get along with people. And, you know, that's why I like, you know, I don't understand sometimes people say, well, that, and they not, they not right. No, maybe you ain't right, you know. So it's, I've always had to check myself, do the self-evaluation before I say a company is bad or stuff like that. But usually the 
the, the, the usually it's going to be you the individual because you you got to have a good work ethic i mean you can't be just trying to tell people what you're going to do what you're not going to do i mean you, you, you can if you want to but there are going to be consequences behind that they send you low you don't want that low you don't want a short low you don't want a long road you drive you know to 100 miles you pull over you stop for two hours man you got to keep that left door closed if you want to build a reputation, if you want to be known as a person to call on when they need to get something done, they'll think about you. But if you just lie here lollygagging and playing around, nobody's going to give you the time of the day. They'll just let you do enough just to, to, to be a driver. You know what I'm saying? So as a uh, lease purchase uh, on an operator, I did very well. It was very successful in that too. Um, and um, so again, and I'll talk about that a, a, a little later. But I just wanted to kind of give you a little background uh, uh, of, 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 of what I did and what I do and what I'm doing right now. Of course, I know you see <laughs> I am an ambassador for Ashley Furniture, Ashley Distribution Center, the world's largest uh, furniture manufacturer and distributor. Yes, we are. I'm telling you, we are doing some great things over here at Ashley Furniture. This is actually, you guys, I'm telling you, this is my first week. My first week. Uh, I went to orientation, onboard process, and boom, fast track you. You get the, you get there, you learn, you do what you need to do, and then you go to work. And I'm gonna tell you some people. And I've been doing this a long time. I got some good vibes about Ashley. They have actually lived up to everything that they promised us in orientation. I've been rolling, man. They 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 send me my lows on the uh, people net, and they don't. Nobody call you, bothering you. And usually that's the way it works. If you're doing your job, people are not really going to bother you. You know what I'm saying? You, it's easy. You're just picking up and you're delivering loads. You pick them up on time and you deliver them on time. If there's an issue, you give them a call, right? So that's what anywhere, uh, no matter where you work at and what, and what you do, that's just what people expect of you. And uh, so, yeah, I'm on here today. I want to talk to you all a little bit about the uh, Ashton Distribution uh, uh, um Ashley Furniture uh, as a ambassador or driver, okay? So, again, if you're looking for a place to call home, and I did my research, I did all the, I checked out all the reviews, I checked out Walmart, I checked out a lot of different companies, and uh, Ashley, and, and when Ashley responded faster than anyone else, I'm telling you, that's what showed me that these people, they're serious about what they're doing. They, they they contacted me as soon as I had finished submitting my application, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about that later uh, again because I want you to understand the process that they take you through is is phenomenal, but it it goes quick when they get that ball rolling. You better be ready if you're ready to go to work and you qualify. You'll be working within four days because you're going to have to go for a three-day orientation i'm going to tell you about that orientation which that's what we're going to talk about in this video today we're just going to basically talk about the recruiting process and i want to just share with you guys first of all uh i won't be quite frank with you um the starting pay is not the best for the industry but they have a lot of perks um I, I made that decision because of the location. To me, I live within about maybe 30, 30 minutes from the DC in uh, Ecru, Mississippi. So I can just drive there and you park my car and get in the truck and then go to work and uh, get back in. It's there. I mean, it's the, the facilities are they are great. Uh, everyone that I've gone to, they're great. Uh, again, the pay is the only thing that I would say is a con right now. But I know that. You know what I'm saying? You, I'm not going to accept the job and then complain about the money because I knew what I was going to get paid when I took the job. But they have a lot of perks. They have a lot of benefits. The equipment is off the change. And they have the potential to make, to earn more money through different avenues. And one of the ones that I'm using right now is the referral. So I'm hoping to convince and to uh encourage some of you all who are on the fence about driving or you may be on the fence about trying to find another job you might be an owner operator like i was 
who now, man, not really making no money, man. I mean, those rates are in the dumps, man. And you got to pay fuel, truck load. You got to keep up the maintenance. You got to pay taxes. You got to pay insurance. You got to pay every trailer rental, all these fees that are associated with you being in business. And the money is just not there no more. It's like big bank taking little bank. That's basically what's going on. So, you know, you got to pay attention to, to what's going on around you. And for those of you who are financially secure, you can do all those things. That you ride it out, man. I encourage you to ride it out. But for those of you who might like, man, I need to get out of it. And there are a lot of people who are selling their truck. Uh, a lot of trucks are, you know, uh, are being taken back. Give an example. Yellow Roadway, the world largest, you know, uh, third largest uh, LTL company in the world. A hundred-year-old business just filed bankruptcy, putting thousands of people out of jobs. That, that, that should concern you. But I'm going to tell you something about Ashton. And uh, I feel good about them. And I feel like they got a very bright future, too. And because uh, I had an opportunity to listen to one of the videos that the uh, CEO, the Warnick family made. That guy, man, he really encouraged me, inspired me because he talked uh, about a lot of different things. He let, he, and I'll tell you more about that later as well. He summed, to sum it all up, he's making sure that the future of Ashley is not dependent on just companies in the US but also China Mexico and so forth and on because we have to be viable enough if you can't get materials over here you got to be able to get them over there so all I'm saying to you all is that look they are have made a lot of improvements to their facilities and um, I remember because I used to deliver to some of these Ashton places and, and it, it's, it's, it's a huge change so I'm gonna get right into it you guys I'm gonna first of all I'm gonna talk about the recruiter that I had oh yeah so my employee number is 196 127. And whenever you talk to a recruiter, and specifically, my recruiter was Melinda uh, Patterson. Phenomenal girl. She was very nice, very helpful, and very professional. Do y'all hear me? The people who work for Ashley, they know how to be professional. Now, I don't know about you, but that still means something to me today. They may not like you. People don't have to like you to be professional. And I wish they would, more business would learn that than you have people who will, will smile and speak to you when you come in their establishment. There's nothing that I hate worse. It's going into establishment and I have to make you speak to me. And then when I do so, you looking at me like you wish I wasn't in there. People, I don't know what happened to the customer service nowadays, but they are gone. They're in the toilet. But I'm going to tell you, the people asking, these people, man, they was very nice and professional from day one. Now, they represent Ashley, and these people love their job. These people have been doing this for over 20, 30 years. Those who I met up in the corporate office, also at the, in, in, in some of the distribution center. They have the same spirit, people. So that tells me something about Ashley company and the people who are responsible for the success of Ashley they are some good spirited people are they perfect probably not <laughs> just like any other job if you're looking for a perfect job then guess what when you join that job it's not gonna be perfect anymore because you're not perfect so stop trying to find the perfect place and complain about every daggum thing and make your mind up that you want to put some roots down and, 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 and change, you know, uh, and, and help better, you know, the industry. So, yeah, 196-127, that's my drive ID code. If, you, if, if you're encouraged, if you move by this video and you decide to come on with Ashton, let them know that you heard it through Tim, the CDLQ channel on YouTube, right? And I am an ambassador for Ashley. I work for Ashley and I'm not going to just sit here and tell you everything that's good but right now I really don't have anything bad to say except, and that's not bad it's just it's to pay starting out pay but I'm okay with that because I've had to make some arrangement financial uh, changes in my life now anyway so I'm good I'm happy I'm happy people I don't have to worry about breakdowns I don't have to worry about working on no truck I ain't got to worry about buying no fuel I do what I love to do I love to drive I love to talk to people I love to just I love what I do this is not work to me you guys i'm telling you uh i thank god that god let me to ask you that's all i gotta say so look melinda patterson now when i applied for it i applied for the job on teen street or indeed if you go if you on indeed you can apply for the job 
and uh, it's going to take you to Teen Street. And if you all know about Teen Street, it pretty much it helps fill out the application because it stores all your information. And you have to spend hours sitting there trying to think of all the uh, the work history and the date, start, end time. All oh, mine, I keep mine up to date, 100. percent So when I apply for a job, all I gotta do is just put in my first initials, make my name and social security number, driver, and it pulls up and says, "Ask you, do you want to populate this with the information that you have on file?" So once I did that, Melinda reached out to me. First, she called me to see if number one if i live within the radius now you do have to live within a hundred mile radius of one of their dc's uh, uh centers okay so again i live in the, in the in the tupelo area so i was like 35 miles from it so of course i um i felt i qualified from that point and then she went on and told me that the the different um positions that were available at that time and i actually do p to p which is called point to point course they do have LTL and 3PL and they also have local shuttle drivers now I, I would I wanted the local shuttle drivers so that I could be home more but that's okay uh, within six months if the position is open I have the opportunity to apply for that so I'm, I'm okay with that I, I right now I'm just really just enjoying the peace of mind of being able to do something that I love to do and I have to be worried about the uh, financial responsibility of it just do my pre-trip inspections and make sure everything is good and I'm good to go so Melinda she sent me over the position and then and to check to see if it's going to be in your area that's going to be one of the first things that she's going to do whoever your uh, recruiter is at that time they're going to want to know if you're in the area and I'm going to tell you guys actually that guy distributions they got about at least eight distribution center in california they got one in wisconsin they got one in uh mesquite texas they got one in eat Group, texas they got one over in uh, north carolina they got them in florida then they got them over on the east coast man i'm telling you man when i go over some of the other things with you you're gonna see man they have a real uh, a reach in this industry man and they're not playing with it man and I didn't know they was doing it like that really I've always liked their trucks that I saw on the road but I didn't know they were doing it like that and, and now that I'm in it and I'm doing it I tell you I am excited about it I wasn't excited in the beginning because you know people gonna always try to sell you a bill of goods and so you know like uh, I'm like okay well what's the cash line where the problem at but going toward the end of my uh, onboarding process, you guys, I began to get excited. I saw the vision, I saw the future, and I bought into it hook, line, and sinker. And and I'm not, I'm not, um, I don't have any regrets from doing it right now. And I and I don't think I will in any way because I've been in the business long enough. I know the ins and outs. Of, I understand trucking business. I understand. Uh, 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 just how, you know about running a business period so you know and I understand people that they're not gonna always just be perfect days I ain't gonna always get the, that load I want like today I got I was on a load I was gonna be going down to Louisiana guess what the load fell off it wasn't Ash's fault it was uh, uh it, it, it was the brokers and end up you know it was they needed a flatbed but guess what Ash did they paid me, said, come on home. They did hit me all the way home, and I would be home in the morning, and, uh, and I would start my reset. You know, hey, I think if I was an owner-operator, man, I would fell off a load, the only thing they're going to give me is $150. I'd be scrambling trying to figure out how to get another load because I really needed that load, you know. So, again, I don't have all those worries right now, you guys, and I'm, I'm really glad about that. I can... When I'm home, I could just focus on my family. I don't have to be worried about working on no truck. I got to be worried about worried about no parts and all those kinds of things, right? So, back to the uh, onboarding process. So, it's going to move quick, people. So, if you do decide to go that way, you make that phone call, I'm going to go over some of the things that you're going to really need to have so that uh, it will help speed up the process for you. Now, she's going to send you out an email. Whoever your recruiter is, they're going to send you out an email. So I'm trying to tell you what you kind of really expect, uh, because it's a it's a it's a it's a well-oiled machine. They I tell you, they thought of everything, people. I'm like, damn, these people thought of everything from the time I spoke to them on the phone to the time 
I got on that plane and flew up to Wisconsin to the time I got back, got uh, met the people at the DC. They literally have thought of everything. And so, is there anything you can think of? Like, damn, I'm sitting there like, no, I really don't have no questions. You guys, because they're going to give you all the information that you need. You can go over it to leisure. Of course, you're going to get, you know, you're going to get, uh, you know, shot a lot of information. You know, you're going to know what's important, important. And you're going to know what you can go home and study and look over some things and learn a little bit more. Because I'm still learning. You know, I'm, I'm learning how to, to work the apps, the people in there. Uh, I'm learning how things work at each DC. You know, I'm learning the truck. And I'm, you know, it's a lot of, you know, it's so, it's, but it's an exciting experience, okay? So now, in that email that she sent out to me, you're going to, it's going to be detailed. It's going to give you a breakdown of what the pay is. It's going to talk about some of the benefits that Ashley has. It's going to talk about the additional perks that they offer. And then they're going to talk about your orientation. Yes orientation or they call it the onboarding process and let me tell you something man that orientation was well thought out as well you have three days and they you know they really come in and they really go over uh, a lot of important information for you so you have to pay attention take notes and if you don't like to take notes it would be good if you could bring a, a recorder with you and then you, you got to talk with them make sure that it's okay for you to record because they do have you know uh guidelines and stuff like that so that you can record stuff that you can go over and uh you know even while you're in your hotel you could be studying over information and everything so the orientation process after you get qualified because you do have to get qualified first and the qualification process Intel, once you fill out the Intel app, they're going to give you a list of tasks that you got to complete before, you know, you get fully qualified. And you're going to, you're going to all, you're going to, and they're going to tell you to pay attention to your email and pay attention to your, uh, that app, the Intel app, because they're going to be sending you information just like that stuff that you got to go in there and you got to, you know, do authorizations and stuff like that. <coughs> And you're going to have to give them permission to uh, uh, to, 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 to submit a request to the to the clearinghouse so they can you know uh, uh, run a drug test on you and stuff like that. So you want to have your commercial license. They're going to want a copy of that front and back. They want a copy of your DOT medical card, passport, uh, TWIC card. Because again, we do stuff on the ports as well. And we also pick up loads from different ports. So if you got a TWIC card, that will come in handy for you. Okay, then they're going to get you, uh, again, your, your, your alcohol and drug test. Once you uh, give them permission to check it on the, uh, on the FMCSA site, which is the Federal Motor Carry Safety Administration site, then they're going to set you up for you to be ready to go take your drug test. And then once you go ahead and take your drug test, um, then then they will get you uh, your uh, your itinerary and stuff like that. They're going to get you your, uh, I'm sorry, not the itinerary, but that part comes a little later once they get you your drug test. They're going to pull an MVR report on you. They're going to pull a DAC report on you. They're going to do a, a CDLS background check on you. Yeah, they're going to check your background. But let me tell you something. Look, I don't know what you your background looks like, you know, but we all got a background. We all got a pad, right? So, look, let me tell you something. Just be upfront with people. Nine times out of ten, if you be upfront with people and let them know what's going on, and you're probably going to get a chance to explain to them your situation before they pull a report and make a, pre, uh, a premature decision about your future. This is your future, so you got to be proactive in this thing. So if there's something on your report, and you know what's on your report because you know what you've been doing. Hey, tell the recruiter, say, look, let me on the clock. I, I, yeah, tell them about whatever it is. Don't lie. Tell them the truth. And say, look, this is here, blah, 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 X, Y, Z. Explain to them the situation. And it might not be as bad as you think. It may not be something that would keep you out, okay? So be honest, be upfront, and and, and, and and have faith and trust that if it's God's will, it's going to be there anyway, okay? So whatever you whatever you got going on in your background, you know, just be up for them, uh, up front, up for them. Be up front with them and let them know about that, okay? So again, we went over the, the MVR report. 
rule violation report, your DAC report, gonna tell you, you know, everything that you've done on, you know, when you get them inspections and stuff like that. Uh, the background check, and what else did I got there? Yeah, so that's all right now that I'm gonna go over with you guys. Now, in the next video, I'm going to go over talking about the travel itinerary. Ooh, ooh. Well, let me tell y'all something. Who I had to do that bad boy first class. Look here. You know when they call names when people start getting on the on the plane? You know they call the elites, the premium, and all that. Then they call the comfort zone. <laughs> Guess what? Ashley put you in the comfort zone, baby. So look, I will talk more about that in our next video. So I hope this video was helpful to you. I hope it was give you a little bit of information to kind of get you uh, interested or kind of, you know, you may uh, have some more questions. And if you do, uh, get in the comment section, ask the question. Uh, I think my email address is attached to that. Send me an email. Uh, again, my employee number is 196127. And um, I'm gonna, again, I'll be coming back with another video. And I'm going to do one video a day, and I'm going to detail everything up to now, and then I'm going to continue to give you a review. And, you know, I'm doing this because I really want to. I feel good about it. Something I've been wanting to do. And Ashley inspired me to do it because I really have a company I really like. I want to talk about it. You feel what I'm saying? And uh, also, a good side note, there are no sign-on bonuses. No, no sign-on bonus. Guess what? Company like this here, you either want to be with them, you don't. They ain't got to pay you no know, outlandish money to come work with them. Hey, when you get over here, you're going to know why they don't pay you no sign-on bonus. Because what they offer is good. Now, but hey, they do provide a referral. And that referral, my friend, if you and I work together and you come on board, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to give you half. That's right. I will give you half of the referral. Guess what? I win, you win, Ashley win. Hopefully, they get a good employee. <laughs> Y'all may not be as good as me, but hopefully you'll be a good employee and you stay a while and you'll turn around and do the same thing. Now, you may be saying, Tim, well, I know you're going to give me my money. Well, I'm doing a YouTube video. You got my employee number. You can't put me on blast, but I promise you, just take my word for it. I'm going to communicate with you the whole process because all you got to do is reach out to me and we can exchange phone numbers and we can keep in contact. And the whole through, and, you know, through the process, you come and on board, I want to be talking with you to make sure that you're getting the same treatment that I got in the other class members that were in the class. We, we all got the same treatment. They're not going to treat one group one kind of way and one group another kind of way i mean it just does not benefit them to do anything like that so i'm pretty sure and i'm positive that you're going to get the same kind of treatment so again keep in mind one nine six one two seven my name is tim my name is ambassador for asher furniture and i will be coming back at with you with another video and i'm going to be talking about the itinerary oh man i'm gonna tell you boy i had a great time man i wish i could go to orientation every week like that right there but anyway y'all have a blessed day man y'all stay positive pma keep a positive mental attitude peace